Cooper comes up, hits it. Yes! yes! It's astonishing! It's Lee Griffiths! Go, Cleach. There's the goal! Cuthbert, she straight. Goal! Aaron Cuthbert! Oh, what a goal! What a goal! What a goal by me! Okay, welcome to the official Scotland podcast. My name is Stephen Mill. Gordon Duncan is on holiday, just in case you were thinking he's putting a wee bit of weight since the last time we did this. So, uh, welcome along. As you can see, I've got Paul Hartley with me, former Scotland midfielder. We're going to have a right good chat about your Scotland career. 25 caps, one goal. First of all, where was your goal? You'll remember it well. Slovenia. Yes. Um, so, 3-0 we won that night. We actually was. scored three brilliant goals. Yeah. Like Fad and Fletcher. I scored the last of them, so I think you always remember that. Yeah, lots of things to get through. There's, uh, we'll get to that in particular and speak about it in more detail. But let's go right the way back to the start of your career. Uh, what's your first memory of playing football, Paul? I think just um, obviously way back at boys' club in terms of I started off at Mill United, pretty pretty famous boys' club in Scotland. So you know that was sort of your, your sort of first memory. Um, obviously playing when you were younger, but in terms of boys club, Mill United was my sort of first team for myself. And at that stage, you know, it's a cliche, but it's every young boy's dream to play for Scotland. Did you think you, you were capable of doing that at that age? Um, I think you always dream of it, but I'm not quite sure you, you ever think you're going to make it because it, it takes a lot of hard work and determination and, and commitment, not just about ability. I think a lot of it's down to your attitude. Always wanted to be a football player. Wasn't any good at school, so football was was my first love. Tell us about going to Euro '96. You were there as a uh, sort of uh, what? Oh, I know uh, what we call it. We call it a hamper boy. A hamper boy. Don't, yeah, don't call it anything else. I, I was trying. I was trying to score um, an issue for us. <laughs> um, yeah, I was at Hamilton Ackies as a as a youngster for 16 when I left school, and then I got the call uh, in '96. Uh, Craig Brown spoke to Ian Monroe, who was my manager, asking if I would be want to be one of the the six young boys to go to Euro 96 in England and um, couldn't wait to go and, and what an experience it was for me. It, it was brilliant. Yeah, we were, we were doing all the jobs. It, it wasn't, a, wasn't a problem. You're doing all the dirty jobs, you're collecting the players' kit, but you were training with, with top players. So that, that was a great experience for myself. It must have been strange at that time as well because Hamilton at that point, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think got relegated we from did. the first division that thanks season. For, thanks for reminding <laughs> me. That, that's, that's really good of you. But we <laughs> did die. We, we get relegated for the first division. so. Mm-hmm. I was a young player coming through the through the system at Hamilton, and um, to get, to get called up to go as as one of the six young players um, with by Craig Brown, who I've still got a strong relationship with now, was it was an unbelievable experience for myself. So talk us through the main game. Obviously, at Euro '96 was Scotland versus England. Uh, where where did you watch the match from? Were you just behind the dugout? Or? Mm, yeah, we were only too far for the for the main stand. Um, so just no far for the sorry the dugout and you know obviously it was such a, an important game that the atmosphere was terrific. We were on the pitch before the game, you know, having a walk on the pitch, which is a brilliant experience for us. And then obviously we lost the game, but just an experience of being there. We missed the penalty through Gary McAllister. And obviously the ball did move, so well, I think that was something to do with it. But just been experience being there and, and being such a high level of game and, and watching that and showing what you had to do to try and make it to the top. Can you remember who the other Hamper boys were at that yeah, point? Yeah, I've got Grant Brebner was one, Michael Craig, uh, I think um, Colin Meldrum was one, um, Jamie Buchan mm-hmm. was one, yep. I think there was one other, I can't remember who the other one was. He played at Celtic, I'm sure. So you were the only one who went on to actually go and play for Scotland then? Um, yeah, there I was. I think some of them had under twenty one cut, yeah. uh, under twenty one caps. But for myself, getting a full cap, yeah, I was only one from that six to actually get a full cap. So from that point on, was you you were at Hamilton? You you played a lot of games there. Your career progressed at a club level. Um, Betty Vokes then took over after Craig Brown. He was dishing out caps like confetti. Have I got one? But not to you. Yeah, I was, I was quite happy with that. To be quite honest with you, it was a bit of a, a low point in Scotland's. Uh, international football, um, I just didn't get one. Look, for whatever reason, maybe I wasn't playing well enough at, at club level, but I was fortunate enough to actually get my cap when I did. You also played at B International. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. It was against Germany yeah. in 2004. In Germany, yeah. And do you remember who else played that day? I've got the team line up with me just now. 
I only, I actually only remember a couple of names. I know, I think Bob Malcolm was one. Correct. I think Adam Virgo was definitely one. Yeah. I roomed with him. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I actually don't know the rest of them. I don't think that's been, I just can't remember. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll run through the starting lineup. Right. So it was Derek Sutter in goals. You're right, okay. Xander Diamond. Xander played with him at Aberdeen. Right? <laughs> Kevin McNaughton. Kevin McNaughton's another one. Ian Murray. Ned, yep. Mark Wilson. Well, oh, yeah. Yourself, you started. Gary O'Connor. Oh, big ass. Jamie Smith. Jamie, yeah. <laughs> Simon oh, Lynch. These names are coming right back to us. <laughs> and on the bench was Martin Corrigan, Barry Nicholson, Stevie Hamill. Alan McGregor was the substitute goalkeeper. There you go. I only knew two of the names. Of. What was it like playing in a, in a B international then? Because it's that thing where you were saying, you know, Betty Vokes is dishing out lots of caps. You're probably thinking, you know. Got a chance. Got a chance? Yeah. Why, why, am, I in the, why am I in the B squad? <laughs> For that reason, we get beat 3 0. So <laughs> that was probably the reason. I don't know. I think um, I think it was, I think it was Rainer Bonoff and, mm -hmm. and Tommy Burns were, yep. were taking the team that night. So. But look, it was just one of the things. Yeah, I didn't get a cap under Betty for whatever reason. Um, it's not that I'm bitter towards that because you know I was thankfully I got my cap under Walter, and I think a year later. Um, did, did Walter call you up? And uh, the, can you remember? No, I think it was just I think just what it was. It, you, you get a letter sent through to the club that right. you're involved in the I don't know 22, 23 man party, mm -hmm. and the game is is it is Italy away? So <laughs> thinking you might. Hopefully he might be on the bench, but I, I remember when he, when he spoke to me um, to say I'd be starting at the San Siro for my first cap, and it was like it was a surreal moment mm -hmm. playing against the, the the top top players. What, what, how do you feel as a as a player at that point? Is it nerves? Is it excitement? I think excitement because I come on I come on the stage very late. Mm -hmm. I was I was twenty eight when I when I first got called up to to the national team. So. I was, you know, I was an experienced player by then at 28 years of age. So for me, it was excitement, um, everything that you dreamt of as a, a younger player. Because I think at that time, I think you're thinking maybe it's pass, it's going to pass me by, represent your country. So my form was good at heart. So that was one of the reasons that, that I get in the squad. And playing in a, you know, an amazing stadium like the San Siro as well. A high profile. Yeah. High high profile game at the San Siro. A, a dream for myself. Um, Walking out in the San Siro, seeing the Scotland supporters, the result didn't go the way we wanted to go because of a special player. I managed to score two free kicks. So, but for me, is my first start in the San Siro was an unbelievable experience for me. Well, you t you mentioned them there. It was Andrea Pirlo who scored the two free kicks that night. Um, what was it like playing up against him? Well, he's um, if you come back to the question later on, that he's the best player that that I've came up against um, for, for an international and at club level. I managed to play against him at AC Milan. He was an unbelievable player, um, one of my all-time favourite players, to be honest with you. Do you remember much else for the game with a couple of chances, oh. Kenny Miller? Ah, we, had, we do. I think we had a, we had a couple of chances at 0-0. Mm -hmm. um, but the game just goes by in a, a, a flash. But, you know, for me, uh, after it's not all after the game you're thinking, I managed to play against Italy tonight in the San Siro, my first cap. You managed to get booked as well. Oh, there's a shock. <laughs> you got booked your first two games <laughs> yeah, for Scotland. Been, that's just the normal for myself then. Uh, there was 10,000 Scotland fans yeah. there that night, which is obviously, you know, always taking an amazing travelling support. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of those ones where you, you probably look up into the heavens and the San Siro and yeah. see them. It's that, That's an inspiring thing to oh, see. Oh yeah, they're away in the right-hand corner. I remember that. And then um, the atmosphere that night was was unbelievable. And obviously the, the, the Tartan, Tartan Army travel and their numbers, but they make such great noise. and. That, that can only spur you on, but a, a brilliant, a brilliant fan base. Talk to us about Walter Smith, then uh, you know, legendary manager. What was he like to loved, play under? Yeah, I loved working under him. Very, very good players manager. Um, man management was brilliant, but he had a, a great backroom team with him. Um, obviously, Tommy Burns I worked under at Celtic, and Alan McCoy. So the three of them together were, were brilliant to work under. And, and what we did, we loved, every time we turned up, we loved it. We loved the training and. You don't always play when you, you go away in international duty. Some games you don't play, you might not get any minutes, and that, especially if it's a double header and it's 10 days and it's long. But working under where Walter was brilliant. Yeah. We were in a spotty bother when Walter took over. Yeah. We'd had a couple of dodgy results to start off that campaign, and then we had the Italy game, which was tough. Um, our f your first game at home at Hamden was against Moldova. So that was your, your first game at Hamden um, for Scotland. Yeah. How how was that walking out for the first time? 
I think brilliant. I think you're, it's something that you always wanted to do and growing up and you know, you want to try and play at the highest level as possible. Walking out here in front of the, the Tartan Army, National Anthem, you've got family there, you've got friends, and then to step onto the pitch is uh, it's, it's what you want to do. Did you sing the National Anthem? I never ever sang the National Anthem. Did you not? No. Not even mime it? No, I didn't <laughs> mime it. I, just, I was always pretty silent. I mean, any pictures you ever saw, I was, I just always, I was always focused and <laughs> I can't claim to be the best singer anyway, but I, I did. I love represent my country. I really yeah. did. The, that Moldova game, it was nil nil at half time. Don't know how much you remember of it. Nil nil half time. Christian Daly scored. James McFadden scored. It was an important win because they keep us in with a chance. Yeah. At least the playoff. What was said at half time with Walter Smith under that? Because uh, Walter was always calm. He was always just saying, "Look, we've got to try and get a result and try and up up it, up the tempo and up the quality." But the man. When, when when you worked under water, he was, was very calm about things. He got his point across, and everybody knew what they were doing. They all knew their jobs when you when you came and worked under water and, and Tommy and, and Ali. The next game was at home against Italy, yeah, uh, which was a draw, one one. Uh, Kenny you, Miller, you set up Kenny Miller's goal. <laughs> you always remember the ones you set up. Yeah, <laughs> right hand side. I think we we scored. I think it was pretty early in the game. I might have been, and I just see, just took a touch and I seen Kenny. Um, hitting the front post and I've just tried to deliver one in and it was a great header. Kenny was absolutely unbelievable that night against Cannavaro. Mm -hmm. um, he was he was top draw but it was a right, a right good game. It was brilliant atmosphere, played in the right way. We played well but we're up against top players. You know, you mentioned under Bertie Vokes, it was obviously a low point um, in terms of where Scotland were. Walter came in, it, it changed right almost instantly because that Italy team went on to win the World Cup yeah. that they qualified for and yeah, there's us hold, holding their own against them. Yeah, we sure, we, we sure did and, you know, the quality they possessed and you said they won the, the World Cup a, a year later. So it showed you the, the, the strides that we'd moved, uh, what happened under uh, Walter since he came in. He just got us really organised and tried to play the best players in the their best positions. And that, is that the most important thing, do you think? Well, but the, the same thing for the new manager coming in, Steve Clark. Try and get your best team in the pitch, play a system that suits you, and hopefully you can be hard to beat. There was three games after that. There was a 2-1 win away in Norway. Norway, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think I think Kenny might have got a double that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one for the right-hand side. I think I crossed one in. And I think he's got sort of the exact same sort of as Italy game, but we were excellent that night. Played really, really well. So a good result for us. And that left us in with a chance of still, you know, uh, being in the ballpark of qualifying. Yeah. And we played Belarus at home. Yeah. Uh, we got beat 1-0. Yeah, it was a poor game. Alexander Hleb, I remember, yeah. I think I was at the game. Yeah, you were poor. Was outstanding. Yeah. Played good with Barcelona play at Arsenal. Arsenal. We never performed. We were, we were right off at that night. And mm. the expectation again, I think because who you're playing, Belarus, you think you've got to just turn up. But we were never at the races. Why do you think that was? Was there a lot of was it pressure? Or was it just a wee bit step too far? I don't know. You got to play under pressure, haven't you? Sometimes mm -hmm. international football is so difficult, and people don't realise that. It doesn't matter the opposition you play against. I remember going to play the Pharaohs, and I think we won two one. So every game is so tough international level. The final game of that qualifying section was, as we mentioned earlier on, the three 0 win against Slovenia. Yeah. Uh, one of the best Scotland goals I remember was uh, in that game scored by Mr. Paul Hartley. Yes, it was. Um, was that a lob? I it was it. a little cheeky chip. It was. Yeah. Um, it was the last couple of minutes of the game. I think, I think it might have been Gary O'Connor that passed it. To you. I can't remember. And I've just seen the goalkeeper off his line and clipped it. But the, all three goals that night. Mm -hmm. Fletcher scored a thirty yard, and then Faddy scored a cracking goal. So. Really good, strong performance to try and take us into the next campaign. And it set us up very nicely going into the next campaign because yeah. we, we got off to a flyer because, yeah. uh, you know, it was the, I think it was the Faroe Islands game first at Parkhead. 6-0. 6-0. And there was a massive crowd that day there really as crowd. well. Like a, a, a fantastic, it's all about momentum in national yeah, football as definitely. well. definitely. And we had that good, going into that, that campaign. See, so we start the game really well. There's no easy game in international football, but we managed to get us you know, 1-6-0. Part for that one. Part for that one. Part for that one. Part for that one. But it turned out to be quite a memorable campaign. We'll yeah. get to the, the France games in, in, in uh, just a wee second. But yeah. you started playing in a, a different role, didn't yeah. you? You started playing a little bit deeper than Holden what you role. were doing at, at club level. Holding role, yeah. Um, sort of, I played on the right-hand side of a, a five, if you want to call it a five. Because we played 4-5-1, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It wasn't rocket science, to be honest with you, at times. Played on the right-hand side because I knew I could play there. Or I played in the middle, but then I started to sort of drop back a little bit. And then I went to Celtic a little bit a year later, and I really mainly played there as a 
I sit in midfield, but I could play there or I could play as an attacking one. But anyway, I, 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 didn't, I didn't matter. As long as I, you know, I didn't matter where I played for my country, and, and I mean that, I would have played anywhere just to, to, to pull on the jersey. That was a really tough group. We had France, we had Italy, we had Ukraine had yeah. gotten to the World Cup quarter final. Very tough. What, what were your thoughts when you saw the group come out? <laughs> this will be extremely tough. How are we going to go to this? Uh, it, was, it was one where we thought, I think the home games were always going to be important for us. And we made a strong start, but well, that was a really, really tough group that we were involved in. You mentioned the Pharaohs game, which was obviously, uh, what you said, an easy game in international football. Tough away game in Lithuania. These are places that Scotland have since then and before then struggled. Uh, they, they, were, they were never easy. And it was a grass a grass pitch. I think they now play in Ashraturf. Yeah. But it, was a, it, was a, it was a grass pitch. I think, did we win 2 1? Yeah, we played them in Kaunas. And did Christian we beat them. and Kenny score? Yep. Yeah. So my memory's still okay just <laughs> You're now. You're alright, alright. It's alright. Yeah, so Kaunas, yeah, um, tough venue, really, really awkward team to play against. Um, it was never easy, but we, the pitch was terrible that night. It was a horrendous pitch. But I think it was. I don't think the weather was great, but we managed to to get that 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 win. Let's get to France then. It was a wet November Saturday night. Yep, never forget that one. Take us through. Take us through how it went then. World Cup champions. Or World Cup final, so. This has got to be a tough game. Uh, we were we we're going to have to really work hard to get anything from it. We knew we would have to give up possession of the ball, and if we got a chance, we had to take it. And we always thought, from a set play, that we might have a chance of scoring. And obviously, I set one up for for Big Gary, and I think it was something like sixty second minute could have been. Um, so, and then we were we were clinging on, we were hanging on. At times we, we were. We were absolutely shattered by the end of the game. I'm not sure many people would have had Gary Caldwell for first goal scorer. No, no, <laughs> and obviously my, I played with Gary later on, and but he just I, I caught, I put a delivery in, and, and big Gary arrives late, and you see you make your you make history and you make your name from that, and mm -hmm. he certainly did. And for us to be involved in that game, even look back ten years later, whatever, and you still think we managed to beat France here, an outstanding team. With the quality they were, they had in their, their, their team that day. Who were you playing up against in midfield that night? Was it Vieira? Um, I played. I played in the right hand side. I played uh, wide in the right that that day. Um, I can't remember who I was up against, but I was. We played a. F <laughs> we did. We played a five. <laughs> if you want to call it four three three, but we were a five that day because we were defending for our lives for the, the majority of the game. But they they so much quality in the group. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at back at the team, it was they were they were world class, and we managed to get a result here. And by the atmosphere that night was it was absolutely bedlam. It was incredible. I was going to say I, I remember exactly where I was. I was in my mate's house when when the the goal went in. You were obviously taking the corner, which was slightly better. But do you, do you remember in the media aftermath of the goal what happened, or you know, like is, is it? I'm thinking we've just scored against France. So how are we going to hang on here for the next <laughs> 30 minutes or so? But overall, we were. It was just. I, I think it was such hard work that game that night. Um, and then it's not till after you came back to the dressing room. It wasn't. It wasn't celebrations for us when we came into the dressing room. We were just, the boys were just. We managed to win that that game tonight. After that, uh, things went a little bit more pear-shaped because we lost away in Ukraine. Tough game, two 0 uh, any memories of Kiev? It was it was bitterly cold. I remember that. It was <laughs> um, they were a good team, um, but going away to that that sort of environment was was never going to be an easy game. And we, to be fair, we we actually didn't play particularly well that night. And um, they were they were the they deserved to win the game. Ukraine. To compound that, Walter Smith then leaves to go back no, to Rangers. No. How did you feel about that? I think we were disappointed um, that, that Walter left because we felt we were. He was building a good team and we had, a, we had a, a club environment, to be quite honest with you. Every time we met up, all the guys were, we just all pals and we got on with each other. And all. It was always a, there was always talk of like, the old firm players never gone. I, I never ever seen that. That was never ever the case at international level when I was involved for five years. So if, when Walter left, we were extremely disappointed. Alex McLeish comes in. What was the difference between Alex and he Walter? He was good. Alex was good. He was um, he was a wee bit like the same as Walter. He was good, and his staff were good. Roy Eating, Andy Watson, but Alex was good. No, look, I'd, I've not got a bad word to say about Alex and his time involved. It was good. We had some good results. So 
No, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed working under him. First game was a very, very late win against Georgia at Hamden. Yeah. Craig Beatty scored Beach. Yeah. the winning goal. I remember I was sat in the south stand with my mate and they, were t they took Chris Boyd off and I was like, what's he taking Chris Boyd off for? Like, Chris Boyd scores all the time. Oh, no, he's bringing on Craig Beatty. <laughs> It shows you. The, what the manager's always I know, exactly. Don't. I know. Uh, but but yeah, it was a make, massive result yeah, in the end, wasn't make, it? As you said there, you make decisions. People say you take your goal scorer off Boyd and you bring uh, Beats on. Another goal scorer at Celtic, scoring goals. And we managed to, to get a late, a late win. It was a massive three points for us. Wasn't it a really good performance that day from us? There was another 2 0 defeat in Italy. Um, it was in Barry. It was. Yeah, we were. I think. Who was it? Boy scored a big strike. Was it Bayern Munich scored? Look at Tony. Look at Tony. Should mm -hmm. he scored him. Big boy. Did you swap shirts with anyone? Were you, did you do that throughout your I career? I, I did. Um, I think I've got. I took Totties top and for the one each game against Italy. Right. Um, Have you still got it? Still got it. Uh, De Rossi. Mm -hmm. Got De Rossi's. No bad. Um, I never. Got, I got Pirlo's at AC Milan. Yeah, I would draw. I would, yeah. would. It would depend on the opposition that you played with. So if, it was a good, if it was a good team, <laughs> I've got, um, who did I get from, from I got Makaleli right. from France, from the, the, the game out there, Same didn't swap in uh, part of the France. Well, that's, uh, that's a no bad thing. Uh, do you keep them always? That, do you always keep your study I've stuff got, that, yeah, your career? I've got quite a few mm -hmm. good, good tops. You play in Europe, play against good yeah. players, you always try and get a top off them. Let's move on to the second France game, yeah. away in Paris. Again, that was uh, some night, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, I think we must have had about 20 odd thousand fans here that night. I mean, the, the atmosphere was incredible. Uh, you look at the, f the French team, you know, they were different class out here, but that team that night, oh, we were thinking if we could get anything whatsoever, we're, we're doing okay. And we hardly touched the ball that night. And I mean, that that's no, everything was off the ball, a lot of running, a lot of covering, a lot of blocks, a lot of challenges, a lot of headed clearances. Keep her saving it. We were never up the park till we were still weren't really up the park when Faddy scored. We were, excuse me, we must have thought it for 35 yards. I'm standing right behind him. I think, look, we've got to keep the ball, give us a little bit of a rest. And next minute he just hits one. And we're like, oh, that's just went in. <laughs> we've got another, we've got 30 odd minutes to try and keep it at 1 0. And we, we managed to hold off. I, I really don't know how we did. And what was talked about after the game, and after the game, and uh, France, it was silence in the dressing room because the players were they, they were absolutely shattered for the amount of work they had put into the game. You know, people say, "Did you sell up?" No, we didn't. I think we were I think we were just exhausted after that game. And just to go back to the McFadden goal for a second, oh, it's unbelievable. It's he was the sort of player that could pull out something yeah, special. Yeah, he, he like was that. the one player that you think up the other end of the pitch that he might. We will call it nick a goal for us because that's what we had to do away from home at times. Because we, we didn't, we didn't always create a lot of chances away from home. And then you know, away to France against the best opposition. Um, then we knew Fadi could, we could pull something out of the hat, and he managed to do that. And you put in a fantastic performance that night, as did you know the rest all, of the all, team. All the, all the players did, and the guys that came on, and even the guys on the bench didn't come on. They're 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 a massive part of it. Yeah. Um, they're, big, they're a big part of the guys that don't play sometimes. So everybody that, that, that was involved that night, including all the staff the, and the players that didn't play, it was massive for us because there was a real togetherness about the, the group. You didn't play against Lithuania a few days previously. No, Were no, you a bit he, worried? He, he, no he told me. Did he? He said he told me he was, he was keeping me for the, the France game. The man, well, the managers do that. Right. Um, he says, look, I've got to play on Tuesday night. It was, it was a totally different game. I think because my my position had changed a wee bit. Luckily being here, we, we know we'd have really a bit more attacking threat. And we knew in France we'd a bit more defensive discipline about us. So we, the manager actually pulled us and said, look, you'll play in France, you'll not play today. Which is fine. Yeah. It's, it's great, it's, it's music to my ears that, that you're playing against the, the, the best team in the, in the world. A couple of games after that, you were actually injured for the Ukraine and the Georgia game, yeah. the the Ukraine game at home, which we won. Yeah, the Georgia game is a big game for us. We had to win that. Do uh, you remember watching that yeah, somewhere? Or yeah, yeah. Where were you? I was in the house watching it. I knew we had to to, to win the game, and we we didn't. And we, the, to be fair, we were big favourites to to win that game. Mm -hmm. But what I've said before that there's never an easy game in international football. 
especially when in Scotland are concerned. Yeah. Apart from Faroe Islands at home. That's what it's a different, different story. Different. So it all came down to the game, you know, just a, a wee easy game against the world champions Italy. at home. And all we needed to do was beat them. I yeah, know, that's easier said than done. I well, remember the, the build, goal yeah, after well, four minutes. I, I was going to say the build up to the game was like nothing was, I'd seen. I think it was a five o'clock kickoff. It was, yeah. It was torrential rain. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere was, it was so loud. Standing yeah. out there, like the I, I remember, you know, the front of the papers they had you like mm. your faces on gladiators and all the rest of it. And then the big come down. But we 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 spoke all week. Ah, oh, we'll start the game well. We'll make sure you have a solid start. <laughs> okay, quick throw in, bang, one 0 down. Mm -hmm. But we managed to to come back for that. We we get the goal for uh, for Barry mm -hmm. for free kick. We think we had a brilliant chance after that with Faddy at the back post and they get slid across. I think he's on the stretch, and that's the side netting. Mm -hmm. And then we know what happens with the, the free kick that wasn't a free kick, and then they score a goal um, the last couple of minutes and knocks you out. But again, special, special memories for you, I bet, oh, as well. You know, the right. atmosphere that night was it's incredible. Not it's not till you stop playing. They, that's what they are memories, and you, you're, you're thinking, I was involved in the games that we scored on at Hamden or away from Hamden, and it's something that you always remember. The, let's go to the, the actual game itself then, you know, you've mentioned the the goal early on, which was a bit of a blow, but we worked ourselves back into the game, we get the goal from Barry Ferguson from the free kick, um, and as you say... I think we're going to win it. The, at that point, you're thinking, they're well, on the rack yeah, here. Yeah, we think we're going to really go and win this game, and the crowd were, were urging us on, they were a 12th man, and we did have a couple of opportunities, and I said we're at one with Faddy, and we just, always that... We lose, we lose that goal in the last couple of minutes, and it, and it just deflates you and knocks you out. What's your? Did you say anything to the referee? Because you, you, I mean, you were quiet with referees. You didn't say anything. <laughs> <the day. laughs> no, no, it depends what referee it was. No, I think we're just, we're just angry that, that it wasn't a free kick. Yeah. You know, it, it definitely wasn't. It. But you, you've got it. That's what happens in the game. Football's definitely changed again, and you've, they've got VAR in now. So I think it'd be even more frustrating now mm -hmm. as a player. But these things happen. You're thinking at that stage as well. That's. Um, you know, we've come so close and in, in what was such a really difficult group, you're thinking, you know, from a personal point of view, from your point of view, I want to play at a major tournament and I'm running out of chances here. Yeah, I think you've probably, I think a lot of players have said that over the last 20 odd year that we've no managed to, this is my last chance. I think you always think that. But the older you're getting, you're in your 30s, you might not see the camp, the next campaign. Yeah. Because you, you, you only get one or two cracks at it, really. And if you're in a strong position, you think we've got a chance, and then, and for not never to qualify, you you were always want to be that group that, that qualify for a, a major championship after '98. Yeah, and it must have been. What was the atmosphere like in the changing room after? Yeah, very sombre, very quiet. People were just obviously very very down, and there's no much there's not there's not much you can say to be quite honest. As a manager, what do you say to the players? It doesn't matter what you say. You're you're, you're beating you're beating the last kick of the game. Just after that, or a couple of months, or a couple of weeks later, I think it was Alex McLeish left yeah. as Scotland manager. Yeah. Um, thoughts on that? We, again, disappointment. Yeah, because he was good. He was good with the players. His, his style was good. His man management was very good. Enjoyed working under him. But these things happen. If you're if you're pretty successful, Alec was still pretty young mm -hmm. at that time. If you're pretty successful, I think you then want to try still, and you're young. That you still want to try have a crack at club management. I think I think I think an international manager is a little bit more experienced. I think it should be anyway. George Burley comes in, yep. who is a wee bit more, who is a wee bit older, who is a wee bit more experienced. You, some do you know, some do you know. So were you happy with that appointment then? Yeah, because I enjoyed working under George at Hearts, but even though it was only a, a short space of time, I think some four or five months at Hearts, mm -hmm. he had us playing good football, and I really enjoyed his style and the training and. But I think, I think when you come to international football, it's totally different. Then you've got a greater selection of players. You, pl you work with bigger egos or whatever, and it, it, I think it was a t it was tough for him to be yeah. quite honest with you. It was, uh, you know, you mentioned the four or five months at, at Hearts, and then George left. That was a fantastic team that had been put together there in a short space of time. That he put the team together, a very good team that, that we thought we could challenge for the, the Premier League, and we got off to a, a blistering start. And obviously things weren't all good in the behind the scenes, as everybody knows. But then for George to get the job, we're thinking, yep, good, because like myself, uh, Stephen Presley, um, 
uh, Craig Gordon had worked under him, so mm -hmm. we knew that somebody was good and we enjoyed working under. But look, it was, it was tough. It was a tough, tough gig for him. Why did it not work out, do you think? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, is, it, is it just as, as you know, obviously you, you knew him and you bought into what yeah, he was trying to do, some but people, some people didn't? Yeah, possibly. George was always used to being a club manager. Maybe that was a difficult thing, thing for him. Maybe other players didn't buy into the way that he wanted to play. I, I really don't. I, couldn't, I really couldn't tell you. Then after George, it was Craig Levine? Yeah, I, I think I might have been only involved in one squad with Craig. I mm -hmm. think it might have been uh, Lichtenstein. I think it was it Lichtenstein. It could have been when Stephen scored out there. Like Manus. We scored a late winner out there, did we? I think it was two games. I think it was Lithuania and Lichtenstein. I wasn't right. involved in any of them. I was coming to 33, 34. Mm -hmm. time. Craig was somebody that... Uh, what, he signed me at heart, so yeah. somebody I really liked, still, still like. I think he was. I thought he was a good manager. Again, that's uh, you know he was much like what's happened now. He was greeted with sort of universal acceptance. Yeah. He was the right man for the job, yeah. but again, it didn't work out. That's what happens, isn't it? And some managers work out, others don't. If there's a transition in players. There's, there's a lot. Of, sometimes there's older players in the group. Then you've got to try and you know build a younger team again. So. It was never going to be easy. You mentioned you were 33, 34 years. Final game for Scotland was a friendly appearance against Czech Republic. Czech Republic, yeah. Um, did you did you know that was going to be your final game, or you think possibly? You yeah, possibly. I just I felt I felt that season was probably going to be my I think my last season probably at Aberdeen. So you I think you're thinking. But look, I, I done. If, if you say to me 27, you're going to get or 28, you're going to get 25 caps. Yeah. Then I would have took that any day of the week. Yeah, and did, did you think that you still had a wee bit more to give, or do you think that was? I think you, I think you, you realise. I yeah. don't think you kid yourself on. I think you know when your time's up, when your legs go a little bit, then it's time to give somebody else a chance. Right, Paul, that's been a great chat. We have a few quick fire questions to okay. finish with. Yeah. So you've already answered one of them, which was the best player, best opposition player to play Pierlo, against, yeah. which was Pierlo. Um, best Scotland player you played alongside? Oh. I, I would probably say uh, Barry Ferguson. And why was that? He was a great midfielder, he was composed, um, he could pass it, he could take the play. Um, yeah, it was a player that, that I played with under eights at Mill United a way back. And then played against him, so, and then played with him, so um, yeah, he was, he was a top player. Best Scotland manager you played under? What one? Very quick. Smith. Very, yeah, very, very quick there. Yeah, very good. I enjoyed working under him. First cap he gave me. But not just that, I just liked his style. And out of all the stadiums you played in, in your Scotland career, which was the best one? Part de Prance. Part de Prance. Yeah. And then obviously winning that game is even better. Well, Paul Hartley, we've had a good chat there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, join us again for some more Scotland podcasts before the next round of qualifiers in September.